Person. You didn't call your Jane, you called someone else? I called Dave. Oh, uh, okay, I'll text him and say it's wrong. Oh, of course. 510672, okay. I am so sorry. Hopefully, this is the right person now. Oh, do you not know his number? I do. Okay. It is him. It says he's in a vehicle. Well, you can check your tuning and stuff. I can use the bathroom. Uh-huh. because um, we, uh, our friend Marsha made a uh, recording on the computer and Ella played the whole Bach on it. We want you to hear it. We can't do it live because, uh, you know, all of our devices are used right now to, uh, to talk to you. But if you could listen to it right now, that would be fantastic. Or watch it. Okay, let's see. And Ella, maybe you could, can you watch it too? I mean, is there no way for Ella to watch it too? Well, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it go. He'll he'll reconnect when he. Okay.
Okay. Very nicely done. Uh, ooh, and the bow too. Um, I think perhaps. century which I don't necessarily dislike right mm -hmm. I, I was taught this way I really learned the new ways and I can play different styles depending on who and where and how do I play but uh, I don't mind this one however things that need to be addressed first it is a little bit too slow and the slow tempo makes you play the energy that comes a little bit from the squeeze of the middle of the bow rather than attack and release. That's the critical point. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. I will try to show you. Hang on. I, my old hands, I, I got two major shots today in my shoulders and the blood test drawn, so I have my arms all covered in holes from needles and they hurt. And I feel very dizzy and I think I'm back. One of the shots was the flu shot and I didn't react very well to it. But I still will show you, see? This is the idea of... Right? The idea of the energy that comes in the beginning. When Bach was writing this concerto, he studied very, very closely uh, Concerto Grossi by Vivaldi, and then he was writing his concertos in that style. It is pretty... Mm -hmm. is by far more advanced than Vivaldi's, but the idea of the strokes is supposed to stay. When uh, you go... Way, but it has to get faster if you want to use that one. 
the other things that you need to consider i don't know if you grew out of the violin or not yet but what i see is that there is a hole between the neck and the violin you don't hold your violin all the way to the neck and yet despite of that your bow is too close to the fingerboard most of the time right so the energy is really not there we use the fingerboard for french music we use the fingerboard for uh, for that kind of song oh my god i'm crying that kind of stuff right or if we have to play if we have to play powerful fast moving bow chords then we go closer to the fingerboard so the bow can catch many strings right especially for the German music, we travel a little bit closer here. So positioning somewhere in the middle and playing around there would be more appropriate. But would you be able to do that? That's a question because you already have a hole between the neck and the violin, which means you're moving the point of sound farther from yourself and still playing on the fingerboard. That alone gives me an idea that you may be trying to find the the simple solution for the violin that is too small. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. However, your relations to that instrument is probably the same as my relations to mine. And I cannot get me a violin that is bigger because it doesn't get bigger. But mm -hmm. still, I would touch my neck with the violin and I would place my bow where it's supposed to. So the solution is right here. You have to look for the appropriate angle of the connection bow and violin. So the bow is still straight, but it is in this area rather than this area and not away from your neck. Do you understand? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. So these are the things that uh, bug me a little bit. Also, the beginning of the second solo, you missed some of the notes, and I don't know whether it's an accident or it was kind of um, an agreed giving up. You know, uh, the... right there, and then right here. Every note has to be played, right? So, and obviously, it is much easier to play uh, faster than slower because you have both. But you have to train the fingers to be before the poem to be reliable. When you play. Even in that slow tempo, I play every note with the left hand. And then I pick it up with my bow. So practicing this way. And then, do you understand? So doing the rhythms and then playing both slow and fast with absolute integrity. So you will.
still slow. You better like it. beautiful and on the temple you still managed to create perfect dynamics and uh, uh, this uh, uh, in the uh, in that part you were good I was worried that you are not going to get your bow back to the full but you did and that was good and the runs my regards to Marsha she timed it perfectly when you It was good. Just slow. It has to go a little bit faster, mm -hmm. right? This part uh, when you play. Uh, I don't. Know. I need to go talk to my uh, dad really quickly. I'll be back. 
Okay. And I think I want to try to measure your violin, okay? But you try mm. to play the beginning and the first solo a little bit faster for me now. I'll be back in a second. Oh. Yeah, I think you guys do that. I feel like I've got like a huge space I could put my whole hand in there. second finger over the scroll. Can right, so basically can when the kid can roll the finger like this. I see, but I can't see box. you. When the kid can reach the, the bottom of the pack box or wrapping the second finger over the scroll, that's the right size. I can't if see. She can wrap the finger and move the violin forward than each. She's ready for a bigger violin then. Well, it's hard to see because, uh, you know, she's not a window and she keeps blocking your view. Right. Right. Thank so you. let me show you again. So, so uh, if if it could go, show me, show me what it looks like when it's too small. If, if, when, uh, when it's too small, then the finger does not reach the bottom. See where my finger ends? Okay. Well, and when it's too big? All the way, all the way around the scroll. And she can hold it like this, then it's it's the right size, right? Right, but so she cannot, her finger is not touching the bottom of the scroll. Really? But her, her arm is bent. I think she can actually move the violin out. Let, Let me see. Hold on, your thing is an inch away. Well, don't move it an inch away. Put it the way it's supposed to be, chum. Well, it's hard with this shoulder rest. Well, then take the shoulder rest off. <laughs> anyway, we're going to see Joan in March. So she can get a new okay. violin then. She okay, can make it. let's wait until March. And hopefully I will see her in March as well. And then we will make a decision. But whatever is the case. I think, so honestly, can, my honest opinion is... Uh, that it's the right size right now, okay. and but that she plays on the fingerboard. That's what I think. Right, and see, the point is Hello? that she plays close to, she doesn't play on the fingerboard, she plays too close to the fingerboard, and she doesn't hold the violin against her neck, which makes this violin by default bigger. Well, yeah, and but the thing like is, is that she's not comfortable with pushing it up against her neck. She just doesn't like that. Well, she needs to figure out how to do that because 
that needs to be. The violin needs to, to go as close to the neck as possible. And uh, if there is a huge space between the neck and the violin, then you need a smaller violin because every half an inch adding uh, the distance here adds another size violin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because right. your point of sound moves away from you. And so, Ella, it, what happens if you tuck it in more? What happens? Hmm? Tuck it in? What do you mean, tuck it in? I mean, put it closer to your neck. Why? Why? Yeah. Why is it? Why is it far away? That looks good. I th sometimes it's just a habit. And no, this violin size probably okay, but uh, it should not slide down. Sometimes it happens because of the shoulder rest being a little too high. It doesn't fit into this. So they move it further out. So there's I see. more space because the shoulder goes down, uh, slopes down. Okay, That's so uh, what about a cloth? You think a cloth is good? Instead of the shoulder rest? No, just to make it more comfortable. Uh, yeah. uh, well, well, we'll play has, around with it. If she has a terrible skin allergies, then yes. I've had students oh, using like fine really handkerchiefs and stuff. Uh, but I never did, and I don't think that it's important. I had seen students who have allergies to steel, and you know this um, these holders right here. They made from iron right. steel, right? And I don't react to them, but some people do, and that's why we use this super modern carbon uh, uh, chin rest that is skin friendly, unlike the previous models. Yeah, I, I think have. It has I have yes. the plastic ones. Right, right. Uh, the other thing is that maybe as she grows, her jaw grew bigger and she is now pushing the violin out with her jaw. But I cannot tell this. Well, the other thing is, uh, you know, she's not seeing you in person. So we'll watch for that more carefully after the, right. the feedback, right. you know. Right. So the bottom line is, it's not a good thing to keep the violin away from the neck. Right. It's not a good thing to keep the, uh, the bow position too close to the fingerboard all the time. However, in the normal circumstance when the child would do that, and I was watching this video and I was thinking to myself that she plays far away from the bridge, but she still manages to play straight bow, which shows a great technique, but it also shows that she's more comfortable to play out there than closer here. Right. That's why I said that perhaps she, she may want to consider slight turn counterclockwise to open the space for her bow, so the bow travels a little bit closer to the right. bridge. Just a little bit. It's not critical, but it... When, when it goes to the uh, pieces like this, I have a student who is growing like a, a ridiculous white mushroom under the rain right now. He was learning this very concerto, the Bach concerto, three months ago and, and patching up the, you know, the mishaps in his technology with scales and shapchicks and all those stuff, right? And now, on Monday, he's going to play the Vinyavsky concerto, which he learned in only four lessons. And it's pretty damn good. But his technology is nearly perfect because he works very, very cautiously. And his mom graduated from Juilliard, and she's working, watching him over like a dog, you know, not allowing to make a single mistake. And they're happy that finally they have a direction. But these things... Uh, some things are negotiable and uh, open for the discussion. Some things are not. Usually when the violin doesn't touch the neck, it's a wrong setup either with the chin rest uncomfortable or with shoulder rest too high. Okay. Right, so that needs to be adjusted. And as I mentioned, I was very impressed that despite of the fact that she did that, she still played with a perfectly straight bow. That is kind of amazing. Keep watching for the shoulder and the thumb. I saw a shoulder going up a couple of times, but I think it was not technical, but emotional. It was but emotional. Even it, don't, don't raise the shoulder. Move something else. Make faces. 
dance with the music, but don't do this because it's going to hurt. Okay. okay. All right. I now, think so uh, if I could say something, sometimes people play on the close to the fingerboard because they're afraid to be big. one afraid to be big. Uh, people play close to the fingerboard because violence mix is here. They're afraid not to be able to produce sound, so they play small and easy mm -hmm. instead of playing heavy, big, and powerful. And I don't think that she has that problem. Okay. It's just a habit. Yes, and, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try to, to do a little bit faster. Okay. Okay. Is it memorized or not? Maybe you should try it without the music. Have you done that before? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, that's fine. your other shoulder rest can i just see it i fix it i i found may i see the other shoulder rest i want to make it uh lower while you're playing well, I, just give it to me just give it to me i figured out what was just wrong. give it to me <laughs> thank you i figured out what was go wrong. ahead and play your piece but i figured out what was wrong i'm not interested that's too much information go ahead Here, I will get either this or this. 
You need to learn to use that energy a little bit away from the fingerboard so you can actually play that blasting sound without too much work. Because if you use excessive speed on the fingerboard, it gives you sound. And if you use excessive pressure there, it gives you crunch. That part of the bow really, as I told you, for, for the sweet sound, for, you know, when it went... For that kind of sound, but not for the powerful sound, okay? okay. Other than that, better. What else did you do? Um, and that was a good tempo, by the way. Okay. Um, 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 are you still practicing scales and etudes? I'm still doing my etudes and stuff. Yes, I am. Um. Hmm? Which kreutzers are you doing now? Oh, sorry. It cut out. Um, I did 9 and 20. So what is your speed for the 9 now? A hundred. Hundred and what? A hundred. A hundred. Oh, you have to get faster. It's better child. than last time. Last time I was at like eighty-eight. Okay, show me. Okay. Which grade are you now? I'm in sixth, and now I'm actually twelve. Oh, oh my goodness gracious! Less than a year left of peace. <laughs> Come on, hooligan, let's go. Okay. I figured out my shoulder rest was flipped on the wrong side. Me. Come on. I'm 
least up to the first half now? What? At least up to the first half now? Yes, just up to the first half note, mm -hmm. if you get 185, you get a price. <laughs> so try to do this. Turn the metronome and go down, ba -da -ba -da, ba -da -ba -da, burst it as fast as you can. Anymore. I did never liked it anyway. <laughs> um, 
Did you play Oh yeah. Okay, so you done that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I still have some of the kids at crowd who struggles with that and that drives me crazy. I'm happy that you are not. It's there. Uh, so, uh, yeah. uh, do you have Shevchik available? Child, do you have Shevchik uh, book in front of you or not? No. No. Can you get it? Or can I send you a page? Or what? You can send, send me a page and I'll print it. No, that doesn't need to be printed. I, she just needs to see a bar. It's supposed to be a number 27, I believe. Hang on. Okay, well, I only, have my, I I only have my phone. It's all right. She could see it on the phone. It's very simple there. Okay. Okay. I believe it is 27. What about scene de ballet? Scene de ballet is an excellent piece for her to learn. Need to finish Bach, and I need her to learn the stroke, which I'm about to show her. I we, uh, we kind of did it once. Well, I'm waiting for him to send it. Hang on, mm -hmm. hang on, child. Oh, here we go. Okay. I am hanging yeah. on. That's the page. Selected page. Open and preview text. So, and what's happening over the holidays? Not absolutely certain yet. I will let everybody know. Uh, I am hoping to take a few days and spend them with my children, but I'm not sure about their plans yet. And okay. I will let everybody know as soon as possible for the New Year's I'm on stage. I'm on stage on 29th, 30th, 31st, 1st. And I believe second. I think uh, I already, I think I've done this one before. So maybe we yeah, make, yeah. we meet so next week and I not, wait, wait. maybe we meet next week and not the week after. Go ahead, Eugene. Uh, Ella, watch. I need you to find this one. Uh, okay. I've already done this one before, but I'll Like a sortie, yeah, but with active repeat and fingers. Of the wrist to prove it, 
Survival Judas. Sí. That's a good story. Do you think I play exactly the same stroke, moving violin, and nothing moves in the bow? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Exactly the same stupid stroke. So. Mm. I think next time we'll have the lesson. That's so incredibly important. I want you to practice it. I want you to try to find that the relaxed free wrist sort of ish kind of stroke on the T and then start circling four times each. It should sound like this. And I know you played it. And you played it beautifully. And you played it on the string, and then you found your sotie ish stroke. I need you to learn to fly. Do you understand? Watch yeah. closely. Hopefully, you can see. See? It's flying. The bow is actually flying in the air, and I'm totally loose. And I'm doing this circular action with my hand. When you will find that stroke, we can definitely start working on seeing the ballet. Okay. Okay. But you also need to get me the Bach. And after seeing the ballet at some point, I would very much like for you to learn the Svinyavsky concerto, but it's impossible without Saltando. It's just not possible. Okay. You also need to start practicing uh, faster staccato exercises. Right. Let me remind you. Most of the people teach staccata by biting into the string. It is a big mistake. It's supposed to be actually a release rather than bite into the string. See? Press, release. Press, release. In a close action. Press, release. Press, release. Right? So, that is the action that is creased. Another action. Watch carefully. This is not for all staccatos, but for definitely for Vinyarsky. This is how he himself learned it. Now, can you put the violin down for a second? I have to go soon, but I will at least teach you that. And anytime you are in a car, you can do that. But don't do it more than 30 seconds at the time. You have to take breaks or you will get hurt. Now, put your, put your right hand on your left wrist, right here, right. Make sure that your uh, 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 left arm is pretty much in the place where the bow would be. And see if you move your hand back and forth with, with this part of the fingers, with almost fingertips, but not quite, like second phalanges right here, where the bow is held, right? And move, no, don't rub, don't rub it, just move the skin. See, so move the skin up and down without losing it. Press down hard enough so you don't lose the skin. And now move it really fast. Now listen. Hopefully this taste time will take the sound. Listen very, very carefully. Don't breathe in silence. Listen. Do you hear it? When I shake it, and then I start closing my arm and go, tick, 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 tick. look, shake. Move. That's what you could try to find on the bow. Not every person know or can play this, but everyone should try. Be careful not to overdo it. Be careful not to get hurt. But if you will learn that stroke now, then many, many, many future brilliant compositions would be much easier. You will not spend half a time practicing one stupid staccato scale. Understand? Mm -hmm. And on the violin, you practice this way. You pick yourself a, a string, and you turn your hand a little sideways, and you start playing, playing basic tremolo. And when you play tremolo, you just, uh, you just tell your hand to, to close. And when it starts closing, this turns into this. Do you understand? In a slow motion, this. And then you just only play half bows because you close your mm. 
I need yes or no. I didn't hear your question. It cut out. Oh, I said, do you understand what to do with that? So you do it on your on your arm. You can do it in the car, or you can do it watching movie or reading book. Don't do it too long. Take breaks, and then you can do it on the violin with open string. Just make it and make it tremolo. So you play at the upper part of the bow as fast as possible, very short, and then you close your arm. You just basically tell your uh, your arm close, and then closing. Right, so it would be like this, only with the, with the... Do you understand? Yes. Don't do it for too long, but practice. It's like doing the bike, but I think the bike, you will find it before you will go into this Tchaikovsky's and Binyavsky's and Paganini's, and you will practice other things rather than one stupid staccato passage that nobody can play. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So let's let's see uh, if you can make another recording, but it has to be faster. So you need to ask Marsha to speed it up a little bit. Okay. If not, don't worry about it. I will try to see you next week, regardless. And if there are any, any issues, I will let you know. Okay. Okay. Other than that, be good. And mwah, I love you and miss you. Okay. Yay! Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.